Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First, welcome to the Software Future Podcast. We speak to myself, Ivan Wolf, uh, my co host, uh, Scratch. Yo. And uh, our guest from uh, Vermont. Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah. Vermont Spazzy Husky. She's yeah. our uh, local artist. Yeah. Our international artist for the weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, so apolo- just, hold, just hold, hold on, Ivic, uh, before you fire that up. Uh, apologies for the sound quality. Uh, there's been some technical issues on Ivic's side. We're hoping to get it resolved ASAP. Um, yeah, just grin and bear mm-hmm. it for the time being. Okay. Awesome. So, Spazzy, maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I am 23 years old. Uh, I've been drawing since I was two, which is like a weird age to start at. Um, other than that, I mean, I don't do too much (laughs) other than draw. I mean, I've been drawing all my life, maxed out all classes in high school for art. Um, never went to college. I'm self-taught because I figured why spend money on that when I can teach myself. Mm -hmm. Um... But yeah, other than that, just self-taught artist that does that for her job. Uh, so you um, s- I mean, since yeah, go, go. And so you're sustaining yourself through commissions and whatnot. Oh yeah, um, have been for like seven years now, I think. Congrats. Thanks. A lot of a lot of artists I know would kill for and to have like that kind of autonomy. Yeah, well, there's there's good and bad about it. <laughs> it's a whole working from home thing. Right. Right, Ivic. I know that uh, from one of our local artists, uh, who's also uh, EC actually. She's she said every now and again that it almost feels like, especially when she does streaming and things like that, that she almost feels like a like a, a what do you call it? A zoo animal. She sort of opens up the screen, the, the screen, and all of these pictures and everything like that. And all of these people are sort of like sitting there, going, "Like, I'm going to throw money at you eventually." Mm-mm. Like, uh, how do you sort of feel about the entire, you know, streaming thing? Oh, I feel the same way. I mean, sometimes like I get, I get angry sometimes when I'm streaming because it's just like a lot of people will come in, and then like, it's cool if you like talk to each other or whatever, and like, like I would rather that than having to like stop every two seconds to like interact with people, which I'm fine with doing anyways. But at some points, I have to like continue working. But there are like a lot of people that come in that are just like, oh, haha, I wish I had the money, and haha, like they kind of like flaunt it in your face a little bit. So then you only have like two mm-hmm. people that are actually there for buying stuff, and then you have like ten other people that are just like joking about not having money and like kind of whining about it which is like like I don't need to know that information so it's kind of like I don't know it's just a weird situation to be in when you're streaming a lot of the time yeah I can imagine that um so you you do sometimes get a little bit of flack on I guess your prices um I mean it's it's high-end art to begin with but I mean you've been working at this for eight years uh your your art style is very set when people you know, buy art from you, they know almost exactly what they're getting. And I know that uh, for, for me, like, I've, I've always sort of, like, looked at the entirety of, like, you know, notoriety versus, um, you know, the type of art, the kind of art that you send out there. I mean, and, <clears throat> like, being full well within your right to actually, like, ask specific prices on people because your art is as good as it is, because it is, I guess, what do you call it, um, constant. Um, have you ever gotten any kind of flack about that? People going like, "Oh yeah, no, but you're you're way too expensive. I'm not gonna look at you ever again," or like uh, maybe going to cons where people do that as well. Does that ever? Oh happen? yeah, like every day almost. Honestly, I mean it's it's almost defeating in a way because it's like, well, you know, if I had a a real job, like quote unquote real job, uh, you know, I would be getting paid, you know, twenty to. an hour, which is what I get paid for art, but since with art, it's all in a lump sum, so, like, people don't see it that way, they're like, oh, $500, so, like, way too expensive, but, like, if you cut it down into, like, okay, well, this takes, like, 15 hours to do, 
and then you cut it down, let's say like $23 and I don't know, like 45 cents or something. That's as much as I would be getting paid worth $500 worth of artwork within that time period. So I just, I just don't think people really, you know, think that all the way through when they look at prices and hence why people are like, Oh, you're too expensive is because I've been doing it for six years. So I don't want to get paid at like $9 an hour. I want to get paid at like $15 an hour so I can afford a house and cars and, you know, food and stuff like that. So, mm. yeah. I mean, 15 is what the, is the minimum wage these days now, isn't it? Yeah. It's recently been put, put through up there in America. And I mean, like, should technically be more, some people would say. I mean, and that's always the, like an interesting question is that like, you know, as an artist, you know, there's a lot of competition out there as well. I mean, especially from, you know, America, there's like hundreds of artists out there, all sort of similar pricing, but different, um, what would I say? Different uh, styles. Styles. Yeah. That's the word that I was looking for. Can you believe it? Uh, English <laughs> definitely failed me <laughs> for a couple of seconds. Seems like but, it. I mean, and like as as if if you were to pick somebody else to you know do art for you, what is what is the uh, process that you sort of go through? Like, I mean, as as a person who probably likes a lot of artists as well, what is the sort of modus operandi in your head when you're when you're going out to look at an artist like for pricing what do you think people should do yeah what do you what do you think people should do um well i kind of like when i first started i kind of did everything for free like i was just like hey i'm gonna practice stuff and it's free so come get it but of course i was like really crappy back then i wasn't <laughs> that great and also i was in high school so like I had high school to do. I didn't really care about a job at that point. Mm. Also, cash um, is cash back then. Yeah. Right, right. Because, like, when you're in high school, it's just, like, you know, it's just free time, money kind of stuff. It's not like you have bills or anything. Um, and then, I don't know, from through the seven years, I kind of just, like, snooped on other people's profiles. And I was just like, oh, okay, so that person works for, like, ten hours on this drawing. And they get paid, like, $10 an hour. But they also have, like, 15,000 watchers, and I only have, like, 30,000, 3,000. So, like, it also based on that, too. Like, if you see somebody that's, like, really popular, you know that somebody's going to buy their stuff because they're, you know, popular. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of have to base it off of, like, how many years of experience you have plus how, like, well-known you are in a sense, which can get really, really hard and defeating and kind of, like, confusing at some points. Mm. It's like you have to, have to sort of sit down and judge your worth as it is. Right. Like, I'm, like am I cheating people by asking them, what, $20 an hour or $50 an hour right. or whatever? Because I had a one point where I was like, okay, actually my mom was yelling at me. She was like, you only make like what, like ten dollars an hour, and you're working like eighteen hours a day. She's like, and you're only making like two hundred dollars for that thing. She's like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, well, I thought that was okay, and she's like, no, it's not okay. So like, she actually yelled at me recently because I didn't have my prices up, but I felt bad yeah. because like, I don't want to charge people that much, you know? Like I, I don't know. As somebody who, like, adores art, I wish it could be free. Like, I just, I wish I could just do it for free, but I can't. Mm. And when you um, up your prices and stuff, you have this, like, sense of, like, doubt and dread. You're like, should I be doing this? Like, is this right for me to do? But at the same time, it's like, no, I am my boss. I have to do this, you know, mm. to, like, survive and do all this kind of stuff. And when you get more watchers, you can kind of, like work it a little bit like you'd be like okay well maybe i'll go like ten dollars up or something no, and... you, you can justify it i mean you know any anything that gets enough traction you can just boost the price and people will still be fine paying for it because they know know what they're getting yeah. right um but i mean what was the thing i was about to say regarding that it's like yeah you say it would be would be awesome if art could be free but you know it's not free food rent right <laughs> living isn't it yeah you? yeah <laughs> like if we were in some hippie commune I mean, it would be fine like i could pay for bread with a song but i mean that's unfortunately not the world we're yeah, living in i'll trade a chicken for a car 
Mm. The, uh, and this this drawing of a of a fox lady. <laughs> oh, For God. a meal at Denny's. Oh, don't I wish. Oh, capitalism, you sick. Is Denny's again. actually any good? Just, just <laughs> <out of place>. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Is it is it like what? Uh, Greasy like, crap. Like roadside cafe kind of. I'm I'm trekking across the interstate. I need to stop somewhere for food right now, kind of thing. Right. Or, ah. It's like I'm drunk at four o'clock in the morning and I need something to eat. That, kind that's of food. Al that's always the context I hear it in of, about Denny's. It's like, shit. I need to eat something right now. Oh look, there's a Denny's that's open. Right, and you have to either be like really drunk or just like in the middle of nowhere. The yeah. For, for us, I suppose the, that equivalent would just be like garage pies. Oh. <laughs> Un unless, do we have 24-hour wimpies? We don't have a 24-hour wimpy, and you really don't want to have 24-hour wimpy anyway. No, what's wrong with you? Ugh. I love wimpy. Everything's wrong. No, but everything's wrong with wimpy. Excuse me? Sorry, we're, we're yes, I don't like wimpy. F fuck you, you oh, fascist! Wow. Is that like a gas station? <laughs> no, it's not a gas oh, station. It's, it's it's like a very mom and not mom and pop restaurant. Suppose. It's a chain restaurant, oh, but okay. but it's it has the same it has a very sort of um um not a super corporate feel to it. It feels friendlier. Like I don't know I don't know what to compare it to, but I mean I lo I love Wimpy, and you should too. I Vic. I could you what? could you repeat that statement? You were roboting out for I a little said, bit. Yeah. I don't like. Yes. Um, I said I don't like Wimpy. They're being sort of sold by Burger King and their burgers, which are like so much better. Yeah, not really. Did you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm just disagreeing with you loudly. <laughs> right, anyway, back to topic. Okay. There? Yeah. Ivic? Yeah. Yes. Do you have any questions? Um, at this point, I'm actually uh, I'm trying to fix things here. Just give me a few seconds. If you've got a question, go for it. PC still crapping out on you. PC's better. Um, just and okay. I loaded airtime somehow. All right, cool. Everything's frozen. <laughs> so, um, Spazzy, uh, mm -hmm. any big, uh, any big cons planned in the future? Like, have you like what con experience do you have? We always ask this just because it's like sort of a running question. We want to find out. We want to learn things about the cons. Um, yes. MFF is coming up. Which is Midwest Fur Fest, mm -hmm. uh, and other than that, I we didn't really do a lot of conventions this year just because like we didn't really feel like it. Mm -hmm. But I've been going to conventions since I was fourteen, oh, and I'm twenty three, so it's been a really long time. Almost a decade. Yeah, it's Jeez. a little upsetting. <laughs> Everyone grows old. How is that friends. upsetting? I would love to go to cons. It's too many. Because you feel old. You're like, oh, I went to here when I was 14, and now I'm 23. Yeah, try... So uh, it's just like... Ugh. Yeah, try drinking in, okay. like, the it's town fun. you were in, in university. Like, you used to, like, drink with people there, and now you go there, and there are these embryos around you fucking having fun. And I know no, <laughs> I know nobody at the bar. It's, ugh, it's depressing. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, are... I think I'm up and running on my Okie dokie. I'm going to disconnect off my phone. Yeah. And go back to my PC. Okay, just, just, back back. I just kill the call on your phone and I'll try and dial you in immediately after that. Alright, no problem. Cool. Cool stuff. Alrighty. Okay. Here we are. See you just now. Cool. Okay, so we're going to try and get Ivic back on briefly. Um. Just hope, hope he lives. Yeah, hopefully he doesn't die on the way back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. PC? Yeah. PC! Oh. Sweet. Awesome. Can you hear me fine? 
your connection is very mm -hmm. stable. Yay! Okay, cool. Back to topic. Did you ask a question? Uh, just about the uh, cons was the last one. Yes, cons and. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's been sort of a quiet year for cons, it seems. And say when? It's been kind of a quiet year for cons, it seems, for the furry cons. No, like. Well. Uh, you know. No, no bombs in yeah. the staircases. No. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> no, no people I falling. I can't even tell you how angry I was when that happened because we were there, we were there. and we were outside. Yeah. Ugh. Crap. That it must was have been horrible. There is. Uh, there's this one story that Shia keeps talking about every time we talk about this situation. So we were outside, and it's like, are we allowed to swear? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, go right ahead. Okay, it was in fucking December, which is like the <laughs> coldest month, like, ever. And so we get called out to go outside. Obviously, I'm assuming you guys know what happened. There was like this weird chemical Chlorine spill. bomb or this... something, yeah. Yeah, it was like something stupid. And... So we're outside, and we're in this big warehouse, which they were having, like, a dog show, I guess, at the same time. So we're, like, in this huge warehouse with all these dogs that are just, like, barking, and they're just, like, all over the place. And we're, like, okay, this is really weird because we're in dog costumes, and there's dogs over there. <laughs> so, like, I don't know if they're, like, barking at us or if they're just, like, stressed out because there's a whole bunch of people in here. Mm -hmm. So it was just this, like, huge commotion of just, like, thousands of people in this little warehouse, and, like... So I'm sitting on Shia's lap, and he's, like, falling asleep on my back. And – because it's, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so this guy comes up, and he's like, hey, time to go, everybody, after they clear it out. So we got up, and we're walking outside. And I'm in a T-shirt because I was inside. And – or, like, I was, like, wearing something really thin. And so, like, he was holding on to me in this crazy, like – I don't know how old he was. Like, I want to say, like, he was in his 40s. But he runs up behind me with a jacket and, like, trying to throw it over me. And he looks over at Shia. He's like, what are you, fucking crazy? He's like, get this girl a jacket. Like, it, like, it was just, like, this huge thing. And then, so Shia's standing there like, what the heck? I have a t-shirt on, too. You want me to, like, take my t-shirt off? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like, what is he supposed to do? So, like, we had this, like, crazy guy just, like, with this jacket, like, trying to put it on me. And I'm like, I don't know who this guy is. And he's, like, trying to put this jacket on me. Like, aggressively polite. Outside. Yeah, like, it was just <laughs> weird. Ugh. It, 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 it kind of sucks when, when um, like, gestures like that, I don't know, when people think it, it's, like, creepy and stuff. But I can also understand if there's this weird guy accosting you from, like, across the way, like, aggressively trying to be nice and, like, put a fucking t-shirt on you or something. But it's, it's like, I'm not the only girl that's there. I mean, like, I'm sure there's other people in t-shirts. Like, why mm -hmm. was I the one that I needed, like, this jacket? And, like, he obviously had his, like, Shia had his arm around me trying to keep me warm, but he only had a t-shirt on. So, like, mm -hmm. it's obvious that he couldn't do anything, you yeah. know? There's only so much one so didn't have a jacket. Right. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Yeah. Shame. Okay. Hopefully that's not going right. to happen to um, us. I mean, I know it's it's going to be the dead of winter when we go... To bloom, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're then, so prepared. And then they're gonna be like, okay, go outside for a bit, like three hours. <laughs> a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Just for like a wee hour. Yeah. Mm, the wee hours of the morning, something. Um. Hmm. So I had a question that has promptly disappeared, as it normally does. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to your art style and what you sort of envisaged, like, what you wanted to do? Like, when did you start beginning to move towards the art style that you're at right now? Um, well, when I got into the fandom, which was probably around when I was 14, when I first went to a convention, um, I really looked up to Wolfie Nail for some reason. I, like, I really liked the way that he drew faces at the time. Like, I was just like, oh, they're, like, so expressive, and they got, mm -hmm. like, big, cute eyes and stuff, and I was like, and I've always wanted to be a cartoonist. Like, I was like, so into Pokemon and, like, so into, like, drawing them. And in, when I was little, I would always, like, the, you know those Pokemon tracing books that you would get, like, in the 90s? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys had those. But, like, I would use those all the time and then, like, send, give them to my friends and be like, here, color this in, like a coloring book. Oh, cool. And mm. uh, so I just loved cartoons. Like, they were just, like, the greatest thing ever. So when I saw his style, I was like, 
oh, okay, it's cute. And it's like cartoony almost. So I was like, I like that. So I would try to do it that way. And of course, me being young, I would be like, oh, I want him to like see me and like, I want him to like, like my art. So like, of course, I would like give him gift art and stuff. And he'd be like, hey, thanks. I'm like, yeah, he's like commented on something. And so I'd get so <laughs> excited. Um, and then uh, one day, I was just kind of like, not interested in anybody's style. Like I was just like, I got into this weird pattern of just like drawing by myself and just like trying things out. And then I would be like, okay, I like the way this person draws their nose, but I like the way this person draws their like eyes or like, so I would just kind of like pick from different people mm-hmm. and kind of just like put it in one style. And then once you kind of like figure out what you like, it just kind of builds from that point. You don't really like, yeah, you get inspiration, but you don't really like try to copy anyone's style after that. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's oh. the whole like research versus plagiarism thing. I mean, right. every, the, there's a book on my on my uh, desk that I it's it's tiny, but I still want to finish reading it, but I don't get a lot of time to read. It's called Steal Like an Artist. It's essentially just it builds up that like um uh, like everything you do is stealing from other artists and just sort of meshing right. it into your own work. Yeah, but Scratch, uh, you know what, I mean, uh, sorry to, to sort of like barge in, mm-hmm. but I mean, like, it's the same thing with, 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 with writing, of course. Same I mean, thing like, with any creative is, like, industry. At, yeah, of course. You look at intertextuality from, like, that kind of perspective, and you're going, like, you know, I'm going to read this book, and this book is going to inspire, to me, inspire me to write my own book. And sometimes people actively, like, you know, respond to the artwork or respond to the to the to to what's what's going on there and i mean like mm-hmm. and you know as an artist i guess you probably have to start somewhere um, exactly. i know that i've seen a whole bunch of people who like take line art and then they color it and then they recolor it and then they recolor it again or they change little things here and there going like okay maybe this is where i want to be i don't necessarily know what's going on and i guess this will probably lead me to a question um the idea of art theft um, cause I know that I've seen a lot in the Google groups lately where people are like, yeah, no, this is, I made this. And they're obviously like somehow managed to like get rid of the watermark or anything along the lines of that. Mm-hmm. But is it really art theft? How do you exactly sort of, um, Ooh, but you know, like differentiate the two? Yeah. It's theft yeah. if you don't credit it. It's, that's just that. It's right. That I mean, like if somebody took something that I spent 20 hours on, like a full two or three days on and then somebody was like oh i made this and you know i took the time and did this and they like took my name off and everything then i would say that's stealing i mean like that's Mm. blatantly stealing but if somebody like looks at your art and they're like oh i want to draw this picture and then they like actually have it up in reference and like try to draw it then like i don't see it as stealing i see it as practicing Mm. and like as long as they're like oh hey the original one's here and this one's mine i think i did a good job or blah blah blah. like i'll comment it on it all the time i'll be like this looks great or like you're doing such a good job sorry i'm like sick so if my voice is like breaking no 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 stress (laughs) but but yeah Yeah. like i as long as like you're not taking something that i spend like 20 hours on and claiming it that it's yours and like i have no problem with you drawing like me or like you know tracing my thing to like learn how that works and stuff you know because that's just that's how I learned I mean like I wasn't perfect when I first started <laughs> I don't think anyone is <laughs> I just I, I guess maybe I don't necessarily see the point in tracing somebody's work sometimes because I mean the proportions get all off I don't know right. I think what 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 would be awesome is is that like if there was like you know those step-by-step uh you know, books that are out there and things like that. I know that there's a How to Draw Furries book one and two, last time I checked, um, that we found somewhere. But, um, like, being able to, like, draw the circle just the size that you want it to get proportions right is probably more important than tracing. Oh, yeah. And, I, like, I had, I think, like, 50 of those manga drawing books. Like, mm-hmm. if I go back to my mom's house, like, she has them all. It's, like, this huge drawer just, like, full of them. But that's because, like, we didn't have the internet as well. Like, we had books. Mm-hmm. But now with the internet nowadays, it's kind of a different situation because now everything's on the internet and people can trace and, you know, remove watermarks and stuff like that. I personally think that if you want to, like, 
learn how to draw a certain way, I think you should have it on one screen, and then you should have your artwork on the other screen, and just kind of, like, eyeball it. Yeah. And, like, mm-hmm. try to do it that way, because then you're learning what's on the other screen. Because if you trace it, then you're just, like, tracing strokes, and it's just like, mm-hmm. oh, well, this is a circle. Yeah. You or, know, and it's always going to look off. Or or learn yeah. like what the, learn the constructs of the human body like um, like work with squares right. work with cubes and cylinders and spheres and stuff to learn like how to build like a 3D body because I mean you can uh, like a lot of the art books speak about understanding how how anything is constructed by using simple shapes squares and curves and stuff like that so. Right, everything has a shape. Every yeah. single thing that you see in the world has some sort of square in it, circle in it, oval in it, some sort of shape in it. And when you start drawing, you start noticing that kind of stuff when you're out in public. Like You're like, oh, that's weird. That shopping cart has like squares, but it also has rectangles. And like I also see like some spheres and stuff, you know? It's just mm. stuff that you kind of adapt to learning once you start drawing after a while. And I think that's a really important part when you're – learning how to draw and a lot of the times you'll learn that in high school and stuff but Mm. it's kind of something you have to take by yourself and kind of learn like Mm. what why is this this certain shape or like why does this look this way and you know and then then you got to get into gravity and then you got to get into all this other stuff and that's just like no that's a whole whole different ball game right Hmm. define pan chilla sorry there's a guy on uh, Rico mm-hmm. who says that he's a pantula made from candy who makes cookies in his hat. How would you draw that? A pantula? Yeah. Uh, what is made that? Made from candy. I have no idea. I'm trying to find panchilla. out now. I said, uh, yeah, I, I've a literally chinchilla? gone to... F- it's possibly. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, uh, licorice all sorts. A panda I... and a ch- chinchilla. Uh... Oh, because I looked at pantula in some anime girl came on <laughs> <laughs> sailor moon part three <laughs> <laughs> Attack <Probably. of> the <laughs> chillers. <laughs> sorry um panda with a chinchilla tail and he's turquoise she rico she he it oh well um okay sorry a uh, favorite moment there um yeah no that's that's actually really really awesome to like hear you know the the kinds of I think the extent of the work that that goes into, you know, like an art piece. And I know that your mom. Um, and f- first question, really. So I mean, your mom is really accepting of everything that sort of like happens within the furry fandom, and the fact that you're drawing art for other people, and you're charging specific things, and the fact that she, you know, cucks you out about you know not charging enough. Right. Um, She's always been like, you know, if you're going to do something, make sure you're doing it and nothing else. Like, if you're going to have something on the side, like, you know, a second job or like a second hobby, make sure that art is always your priority, like no matter what. And she's ever since I was like little, she would always like buy us books and like drawing sketchbooks. And she'd be like, okay, fill this up in a month. Like here, make sure you finish this up. And she was just like so into making us draw and like our creative sides and stuff and then once the furry stuff started happening uh i just started drawing and she was like oh what's that and i was like oh it's just some furry she's like oh okay and then that was the end of that conversation and then (laughs) good yeah and then i was like i started drawing like porn and stuff and she goes what's that and i'm like oh well these people paid me like 50 dollars to draw this she goes oh good job and then she just left and i was like okay and that was the end (laughs) of that conversation and then when I was living with her, when I was uh, 20, before I moved out, mm-hmm. uh, she noticed that I was, like, getting really good, and she would actually come in and, like, give me pointers. She'd be like, oh, that's weird that, like, dick looks broken. And I'm like, oh, okay, thanks, Mom. Like, thanks for helping <laughs> me with that. You can leave now. Like, <laughs> she's very, very open with it, and she's, like, totally fine with it. And she, like, went to a convention one time. It was really funny because she was, like, going to the bars, and she's like, I met some really cool people here. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> so she's pretty pretty open about that kind of stuff. Okay. Nice. That's actually pretty awesome. Like, I'm I'm impressed that there are parents out there that, like, are extremely open to, you know, this kind of thing. And, I mean, even when it comes to, like, the... The, the, the sex part. I guess the... I was going to say risque, but go for it. Um, mm-hmm. 
<laughs> sex part. I yeah. mean, it's it's pretty apparent. I mean, a lot of artists draw it. So, what is? I mean, like, and it's it's gonna be a weird question coming from me. And I mean, like, this happened in the 1990s, but it's it's something that's always like interested me the entire idea of the burned fur movement where they were all against the entire idea of pornography being connected to the furry fandom and things like that has anybody ever approached you on the way or what, what kind of art you're drawing in that sort of perspective going like hey why are you drawing porn your your art is good enough to not be porn you know that kind of thing um no i don't think anyone in the fandom has like said that i feel embarrassed mm -hmm. when i'm like when someone's like oh hey what's your job and i'm like oh i draw things uh mm -hmm. they're like oh do you have a website i'm like no and it's just like <laughs> it's kind of like a weird subject to talk about with people outside the fandom but like in the fandom i don't think really people care like if i was drawing porn or not like i mean porn sells more and that's mm -hmm. why i draw it because like i feel like this is another like doubt thing but if i like stopped doing porn that people would be like okay well she's all news i don't want to mm. buy anything from her anymore because it's such a big implement in the fandom unfortunately and fortunately mm. it's just mm. this weird i don't know it's just like one of those thoughts but no one's ever came up to me and be like you should stop doing this because i think like i don't know i think they don't care about that side of it <laughs> mm. And I mean, everyone, everyone in the furry community yeah. is the very sex positive. So, or most of the people are very sex right. positive. So it's it's not a shame thing. Yeah. Definitely not. Hmm. Honan here mentions or comments like when people look over to you, over your shoulder and perp and you purposely draw dirty bits. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> <laughs> that's embarrassing. Well, I mean, if they're looking over your shoulder, they really. Well, I mean, again, it's it. not like people are looking over your shoulder. You're, you, people like sign up to your channel and go onto your, uh, onto your uh, like stream feed, and they're like, "Oh, look, I like this. I'm gonna stick around for a bit and just stare." <laughs> there is actually uh, looking over the shoulder <laughs> concept got me into another concept. When like, since we live in an apartment, for some mm -hmm. reason, our manager likes to think that she can just come in here and like, oh, okay. like inspect whenever like she does not tell us and she just comes in she's done that three times so far and every single mm -hmm. time i've been drawing porn every oh. single time so like i have to like <laughs> run out there and i'm like hey what are you doing and then she's like oh i'm just gonna like look at your kitchen and i'm like okay and then i run back to the bedroom and like turn off all the monitors and then i run back and i'm like so do you like need anything or like what's going on she's like no i'm good and then she'll leave and i'll be like oh my god there was like a huge like penis on my screen and she just like walked in here and i'm like freaking out and then i'm like that was close <laughs> like because like i don't know this lady like she's just my manager like for the apartment like she's just mm -hmm. the owner so i'm like oh my god i don't know what she would think if she saw that like it's just it's yeah, one of those yeah. things where it's just like but you have to be so cautious about it is, is that even part of your apartment like contract that says that they can come in at any given point without giving know. you like a minute's notice like, I mean, like, apparently contract. they That's email. Otherwise. Right, like, apparently they email us, but, like, I don't get word of it. Like, I don't know when they're coming, so, like, half the time they just walk in here. Like, I had some other guy, like, some, I don't know, like, some sewer guy, like, came in and, like, checked our tub, and I was just like, I don't know when you're supposed to be here, and why are you in here? <laughs> it's just, like, it's so weird. It's a weird concept. And, like, they say that they email us, but I don't know. Mm. I mean... No, um, uh, yeah, check your contract. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a clause that just stipulates like when when they should come or when they will right. organize inspections because for us it's like twice a year. And there was yeah. like call beforehand. Otherwise no one's home. No, it's 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 literally called trespassing in South Africa. Well, I'm sure it is here too. It's just that no one cares. <laughs> uh, it's yeah, well, I guess the government won't necessarily like do anything about it, no would they? No. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Send an email to Obama. Thanks, Obama. Yeah, right. Someone's coming to my house. Do they, they almost the saw this place? penis on yeah. the screen. <laughs> Imagine getting kicked out for that. I'd be so angry. I'd be like, I'd that's be how you're getting your money, lady. Mm. <laughs> well, I mean, didn't wasn't PewDiePie kicked out about because he was like he was too loud. Yeah, he was loudly recording something that his landlord mistook as like like aggressive gay sex 
So yeah, like he was recording a video, <laughs> and like of course they're like moaning and yelling and stuff, and like I guess like the person next door was like, oh, they're like a couple of like gay guys over there, like fucking, and it's really loud, and like apparently it was just this huge issue, mm. and they got like kicked out. It was really weird. It was kind of sucky, <laughs> but yeah. Well, apparently that guy was homophobic for one. Yeah, I heard as much. Yeah. Uh, Iggy Twiggy mentions, so Santa needs to email you to deliver their presents. Well, that would, that would at least confirm a bunch of suspicions that I've had. <laughs> that would explain that email that I get. Mm -hmm. It always delivers coal, I wonder why. Check my spam folder <laughs> more often, note to self. <laughs> <Yeah>. Stop <laughs> deleting them, like, offhand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> like... When it, I mean, you you said that you tend to get angry at times with with people and anything like that. And I know that a lot of artists, um, not necessarily, I'm not necessarily sure about Wolfie Nail, but I mean, I know the guy who used to do, jeez, now I can't remember, Better Days. Mm-hmm. Like, mm, I think so, yeah. He, he disappeared completely off of the uh, like face of the earth. Um, Did he? I think so. I'm not necessarily sure. He's not doing any more of his other comics, or maybe he's gone to Patreon and like now just sending it to people who pay money. But it's it's really kind of interesting. Like what? Because I've been like I used to follow him a lot way way back in was it 2000 Scratch? When did I start reading Better Days? Mm. He knows me intimately. I don't necessarily know. I don't know when you were. I shouldn't say it like days. that. Um, oh, is this is the artist Fisk or whatever their yes. name is? Yes. Well, oh, Fisk, Fisk was his main character. Jay Naylor. I remember Jay Naylor. Yeah. yeah I, was, I, was I just looked up the site and I recognized the style. Mm. Yeah. Because I mean, he was he was busy working on like two separate comics. One like at sea, which was absolutely amazing. Like the coloring was off the chain good. And then he just sort of disappeared. I think it it, it almost seemed like that because. I don't think that I've seen a lot of his work since around about 2014, 2015. And, like, I'm always worried that people, and especially artists, get chased off because they're not doing the things that what other people want. But, I mean, if you want them to do what you want them to do, you kind of pay them to do that. Mm. You know? Right. Well, like, so I'm looking on his FA account, and, like, he's still active, but, like, not a lot like he mm -hmm. uploaded something in july which is like ah. a month ago um but like a lot of the time i think it's just stressful because like you have so like right now i have uh seven people in my queue which i'm all like emailing them and like every day and like making sure that they have like their whips and you know whatever they need um and <coughs> excuse me and <laughs> what <laughs> They're whips. <laughs> Not that kind of work whip. in progress, Ivic. Work in progress. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, making sure they have their bondage gear and just you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. But anyway, I'm so like half the time that you're messaging these people, like for some reason I don't know if it's like the furry community or if it's just like people online in general, but they just don't get it half the time like when you're trying to explain to them like oh hey i can't do this correction because i'm so far into this picture there's no way for me to like go back and like change it they get really angry and then they're like well i want a refund and it's just like well i've already put like 15 hours into this thing and mm. you're asking for me to give you like 500 dollars back and which is not feasibly possible because that's already like on the food and like bills and stuff and yeah. I've already put hours into it, so obviously mm -hmm. it has to get finished. And for some reason, like, people just don't get that. Like, they don't get the process of art. So, like, half the time you're, like, arguing with these people about how things have to go. And just for some reason, they just don't – like, it's hard for me to explain. They just – like, I, because I don't want to say anything mean, but I also – it's hard. I've had so many different encounters. Like, okay, for an example – one time, I won't mention any names, but one time I had this person where they ordered an icon from me, and they were like, I finished it, send them like a whole bunch of like sketches and stuff, and they were like, oh, it looks great, they gave me the okay to continue going, 
And so I was continuing going, finished it, sent it to him. And this was before, like, I had, like, a terms of policy service. Like, I had a mm-hmm. little one, but it wasn't, like, the big one that I have now. Um, yeah. So I, I didn't have any rules about, like, how many sketches you could do or, like, how, many, how, much, how much time I could put into it or whatever. Um, so they were like, oh, well, this looks off. Can I, like, have a different expression? And I was like, okay. So I'm like, that's completely fine. I understand. So I went back. And the thing is finished, by the way. Like, it's, like, it's not, like, in sketch phase. It's not an inking phase. It's done. Like, it's completely done. So I go back. I erase everything. I redo it. And I send it to him again. And he, I give it to him. I'm like, okay, so how is this? And he goes, what the F is this? It looks like I'm having an effing seizure or something. And I'm like, Uh-oh. okay, dude. I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but, like, do you want me to fix it or whatever? And he goes... He's like, yeah, just put it back to the original one. And I'm like, okay. Uh-huh. So I go back, I draw it again, and finish it, give it back to him again. And I'm like, so how does this? And he's like, I'm writing a dispute uh, thing on, um, what's that live journal thing? Oh, that, that artist thing. Yeah. Aware or whatever. And I was like, you know what? Whatever. So I was like, fine, go ahead, do it. I honestly could give two craps about what you do. Um so I gave it to him, left it, and he starts, like, um, what's that word that I'm looking for when you, like, bash somebody on Twitter? Subtweeting. He was, like, subtweeting uh, me on Twitter, and he's like, don't ever fucking commission this person ever again, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, this guy is insane. Like, I don't know what's wrong with this guy. So, like, I – so I have a whole bunch of people that were, like, white knighting me, of course, because when you have kind of, like – a name for yourself people like tend to butt in to conversations Uh um so that was happening at the same time so i'm like going through all these tweets about oh this person's a saint and oh spazzy husky you're in the wrong or like oh blah blah blah. so there's like thousands and thousands of tweets i'm like reading through because of this guy and this was like two years ago like this was a while ago but um so me, I was like, well, I'm going to screen cap everything. So like I screen capped everything he said to me and like, all, like I screen capped when I did stuff, what happened. And like, I had this whole folder like laid out. And so when he was like, well, I'm going to put you on artist beware. And I was like, okay, well, here's this folder that I complied of what exactly happened. So if you do put one up, I'm going to reply with this folder. And so he was just like, oh, well, don't do that. And I was just like, too late. Okay, well then you need to re yeah you need to rethink what you're saying because I had this huge folder and I still have this folder of like mm. of because like when you have people jumping into the conversation they're screen capping stuff and like they're grabbing information so like I had like people like messaging me of like oh I found this on his like private account and blah 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 so like I had all this stuff of like what he was saying it was just this huge mess and mm-hmm. like that's the only time I've had that happen but like sometimes people like get to those points and it's just it's so stressful for an artist to be like well i did all this work and now you're like freaking out on me and i don't know who the heck you are because it's the internet and Mm. you just have like this like oh should i be doing this job like is this okay and you're your own boss so it's like you don't have someone to be like oh excuse me a sec Mm -hmm. you don't have somebody to like go and be like oh hey boss should I like not talk to this person or like what should I do you're kind of like your own boss so you're like what the hell should I do like should I not message this guy or like so it's kind of hard it's very stressful to be your boss and the person working at the same time like it's just because when situations like that happen you have no one to go to and it's just like this huge mess and I think that's why people leave is because I think when that stuff happens, they're like, well, I could have a job where I don't have to deal with this crap and mm. stuff like that. Uh, but then again, I mean, like you deal with that crap all the time anyway, in a job or right. out of a job. Mm. Yeah, uh-huh. and that's that's the problem is that, like, I think when people are working in this industry, I feel like they think that there's going to be, like, something better or, like, they're going to go into, like, a corporate job and they're going to be like, oh, well, someone's going to do this stuff for me. But it's like, no, you're going to have someone telling you what to do. And mm. then on top of that, you're going to have all this problems that you have to deal with. So it's, yeah. like, a good and a bad thing. Mm. Huh. No, for sure. Um, hmm. 
I had a question again. It's it's gone again. Should I, That's okay. <laughs> should I pick up the reins? Go go for it, Scratch. Yeah. Have Have you had to use or like report uh, on artist beware yet? Like, has that been a useful resource for you that you mentioned it so outright or? Um, um I've luckily I've never been on it, um, because I treat my job like a real job and I try to be like nice to everybody but mm -hmm. I have seen like some of my best friends on it for like really stupid reasons and I was like this site is just dumb like mm -hmm. <laughs> and like I'd never go on it to like I kind of I kind of predict my own thing like if I'm going to commission somebody I'm like I oh, will see how they work like I've just I commissioned someone recently obviously won't mention the name but like they were just really sassy and I was just like <laughs> never commissioning them again so like I just kind of like Kind of pick and choose. I don't really like take other people's opinions for that kind of stuff. Okay. Stop sassing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Captain, we're uh, getting high readings on the sassometer. <laughs> Sassometer. Yeah, uh, it's pronounced sassometer. And I'll thank you it's to pronounce your face. I, I thank you to remember how it's pronounced. Oh, good one. <laughs> don't encourage him. Um, I do. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I'll give you courage. Um, <laughs> I was gonna ask. Um, now the term "popular" is, I guess, <laughs> one with. Yeah, exactly. That that's that's the general reaction that I hear every now and again from some people. Some people who are popular tend to go like, "Yeah, I'm a popular. Yay!" You know that that entire that's sort of thing. Called that's called egotistical. It is called egotistical. And I mean, like the thing is, is that like just because you're popular doesn't make you a popular fur. Like, what, what, what? Firstly, what defines a popular fur? And secondly, um, have you ever been called one? And how did you react to that? Uh, I hated it. Uh -huh. I mean, like, I've only got called it probably like twice, but I think it's because it's not as a popular like word to say as much as it was like when the fandom like you know like 10 years ago like i think people mm -hmm. when they were making like those shirts or whatever those poppy mm -hmm. fur shirts i think is when yeah that was like when it was popular yeah you know but, um, it, it's oh, go ahead. sorry go. no go for it um i was just gonna say that like i've never really been called that and like when people call me like popular i'm like oh thank you like i don't because i don't think i am like i'm just like this person drawing you know dicks for a living like i just <laughs> like that doesn't yeah. seem like a good thing you know like it's not like i'm not that popular you know mm. i just don't see it that way but of course like i see a lot of there's like a couple people that i'm following that only have like 500 followers or something but i think they're popular like i'm like oh they're so good and like ooh, like i want to be their friend and stuff but i think everybody has like their own perception on what popular is yeah. like, I don't think it's just like, oh, you have more watchers than this person. I think it's just who you talk to when yeah. it comes to that. I mean, and it's 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 always kind of interesting. Now, I mean, I had a conversation with uh, a fur on Telegram at one point, and um, if if he ever listens to this, you'll probably know that I'm talking about him. But I mean, like he was. I was I was sort of talking about our convention that's coming up recently, and no like he is also trying to do a couple of things and um he was just uh, like sort of it was it was it was this constant name drop every single time and i was kind of sitting there going like look uh you know that's great i love the fact that you can talk to all of these people and maybe i don't have those contacts i would love to have them because they're people that i wouldn't mind having on the podcast but it's it's that entire thing of like if i'm going to name drop like 700 people that i know just because it's convenient for me to do so, um, that it kind of destroys the entire thing of being part of a fandom. Just because you talk to one person or to another person because they're in a suit or because they're not in a suit or because they draw, because they draw good. <laughs> wow, my English. Um, <laughs> or they speak good. It, 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 no, they speak good, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> profusely so. Um, and like, it, it, I don't know. Like I've honestly, sometimes I've been starstruck by by some of the people that we've had on the podcast, and it affects the way that I speak. It affects the way that I'm sort of like try to approach them, and I try to be as professional as possible, as as you might have seen in some of my emails, mm -hmm. up until the point that we sort of like got into the normal kind of exchange thing. Right. And I guess like I mean, it's not because you would want to treat a pop you for, or not even a pop you for. It's not like you would treat somebody who has, you know, a group of 
people that they know or have some form of influence. Um, <clears throat> note the air quotes that I'm putting on the screen um, in respect to the word influence. But I mean, it's, it's that entire thing where as soon as you're starting to throw your weight around, it's actually kind of interesting that you'll note that the vast majority of the people that were friends with them start kind of distancing themselves from themselves from that person because why are you throwing your weight around what's the point we're a fandom not a not like a conglomerate where somebody gets paid more than somebody else does and that they're your boss you know right it's like when you're in high school and you have like that popular kid and like you end up kind of being friends with them and then they like find a new best friend and you're like oh okay well i don't want to be friends with them anymore it's kind of like that situation like you know, if I'm going to be friends with you, I'm going to be friends with you. It's not like my pop, like popularity or like anything has nothing to do with it. Like, and it upsets me when I see people, because like I've had a few friends actually that um, have been like artists and stuff, and like they we would like draw together. But now I just don't talk to them because they're so excuse my language up their ass about mm. their artwork. And it's just, like, I don't want to be around that person. Like, it's, like, yeah. why should I be around that person? And, like, another thing that I keep in mind is that, like, when you're in the fandom, um, you might be, like, this golden icon about fursuiting or art, whatever. But when you're out of the fandom, you're nothing. Like, you're yeah. some guy that worked at McDonald's or something. Like, you're literally nothing. So, like, to me, like, out of the art that I do, like, I'm nothing. I'm just this, like, girl that, like, sits at home and watches tv you know like it's yeah even to myself like it's so when i see it as a fan of like popularity stuff i just think it's stupid like i think it's childish and i think it's just dumb yeah. to like worry about that kind of stuff yeah i mean like we had we had uncle kage on here and like i'm probably going to be one of the first thing or first people to say that it wasn't necessarily our best podcast but it was a Ooh. good podcast in that um we were able to you know get to speak to him, for instance. I mean, like, it's, it's very rare that he, I mean, he opens up on his own, but the thing is, is that it's very rare that he takes, you know, other furries and goes, hey, yeah, no, I'll, I'm more than willing to speak to you. And that kind of, like, immediately sort of brings you straight down to ground from that entire thing, because at one point he was just like, you know what, I'm just a guy who drinks a f really, really inordinately large amount of wine and talks shit for the vast majority of, like, you know, uh, the things that I do, and that's absolutely like that's that's the kind of thing that that I'd almost expect from the fandom itself. And mm. I guess mm -hmm. maybe expectations aside from that, it's just yeah. that you know, we're we're normal people. We have our issues, but then again, like sometimes as a popular or I, I guess we're going to use this term sort of semi slanderously, um, is that like it's that entire thing of my feelings are more important than yours. And that's the part that right. really just it grinds my gears on, 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 on some days. Like you're sitting there going, like, I really don't want to deal with you right now because you're throwing this at me and I really don't want to have it thrown at me. Um, yeah, and it's it's weird because like the furry fandom is so like everyone thinks they're buddy buddy with everybody, but in reality we're all strangers that don't know each mm. other. Like you can't come up to me and be all buddy buddy with me because like if I saw you at McDonald's and I had no fucking clue who you were, like why do I wanna why do I want to be friends with you? Yeah. You know? But since we're in this fandom, they just think that, like, oh, hey, we're hot. We're both furries. We can, like, be best friends. And it's like, no, we can't because I don't know who you are. Mm. And it's you just know, weird. Maybe try speaking to me for the first five seconds. Right. <laughs> maybe, like, interact and, like, have a normal conversation other than saying mer to me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's happened. Oh, I get notes all the time where it's just like, you literally see the title, and it's like, hi, and you're like, oh, I already fucking know what this note is. It's literally just going to say hi in, in it, and then you open it, it's like, hi, how are you? It's like, did you have a question, or, like, do you want to talk, or, like, I mean, oh. I guess I could say good, but, like, that's, like, it. I mean, like... Are we commissioning something, or... or well, long? yeah, I mean, like, I don't mind talking to you, but, like, if you're just going to say hi, then it's like, okay, hi, but, like... I don't know what to say after that. I mean, like, bring up a conversation, like, say something, you know? Because, like, once you say hi back, they, like, don't say anything. And it's just like, uh, oh. Yeah. And, you know, and that's, that's always, always – that's, that's one of the more difficult things as well is, is that as the more, once again, air quotes, popular you become, it's, it's almost like the less people take your entire personality into account. Right. 
I've had people like not come up to me because they think I'm too busy. Like, like I'm this like person that they're like, oh, I don't want to disturb this person because they're doing something. Where I'm literally just sitting in the bathroom, like taking a shit. And I'm like, I'm not <laughs> doing anything. I'm going to the bathroom. It's uh, for some reason like I not uh, like I'm seeing a scene like that play out and like. Oh no, I can't come up to her. She's too busy. And you're literally like sitting in the foreground eating chips, scrolling through your phone. Right, exactly. Like, that's <laughs> what I'm doing. Like, I was. One time we were at MFF and I had someone after the convention. They were like, oh, I saw you on like Thursday or whatever, but I didn't want to say hi because I was too scared. Or like, you looked really busy. But I remember on Thursday, I literally brought my bags up to my room, sat them in the room, came back downstairs, and like sat at a table and like had lunch. Like, that's what I did. <laughs> Wow. And I was like, that's not important at all. Like, I'm literally just making sure my body doesn't die on me. Like, that's all I'm doing. Yeah, you know, sustenance doesn't qualify as an engagement. Right. Yeah. Like, you can come up and talk to me. Like, it's okay. Like, it's not, I'm not going to, like, stab you or something. It's okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can just I'm not going to risk. <laughs> yeah. You have a stylist, stylist murder now five. Spazzy's done it again. I know, like they think I'm gonna like break their arm when I'm yeah. literally not gonna do anything. No, like yeah. <clears throat> sitting there, you stab a guy in the hand. Like unless you're a steak, move away from my table. <laughs> yeah. But then you're like murder hungry already, so like. Right. Yeah, you might as you might as well just eat the hand. Mm -hmm. My dad did actually stab a waiter in the hand once. Oh my god. Oh, but it's because he wanted to take his steak away. He yeah, was like, busy, wasn't it? Yeah. He was still e eating and the waiter was coming to like clean up uh like it, they were really busy or something and the waiter came to clean up the the plate of the busboy or whatever. And there was still mm -hmm. some food left on it like a, a cut and everything. It was like one or two bites left. And the guy was sort of like reaching for the f uh, to take the plate away and my dad stabbed him in the hand with a fork and he just like <laughs> he's like quickly quickly shifted away. <laughs> obviously, obviously tipped to like uh, make up for it, but I mean, yeah, it was kind of funny. Huh. I mean, you shouldn't be taking people's plates unless they're literally like away from the person anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, like when they push it away and they're like, yeah. "Hey, I'm actually done with this." You or, know. Or they've done the whole like forks crossed thing. Right, like crossed? they're they're like they're not crossed like together on the plate. Forks together. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Not crossed. Crossed means I'm still busy. So I'm like, yeah, that. When I will gnaw this bone to death. Yeah. Like, I'll and take it home and make soup. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yay, nothing better than bone soup. Wow. Okay. Um. So, like, obviously you're you're doing commissions for people. I know that you've started. Have you? You started doing like Telegram stickers. I remember I've seeing that. I thought about it, but like. I've never done it. Like, I just, like, for some reason, I just haven't done it yet. Like, I feel like people wouldn't be interested because so many people do it. Because it's, like, why have, like, 20 different versions of, like, the same thing? I don't know. Because, yeah. I don't me. know. Yeah, I've, 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 seen, I've seen a lot of stickers out there. And I've seen people, lay in the, and the prices for it. And I think uh, Doja myself, Doja is my flatmate. He was the one who almost fell over off of the bed. And probably you might hear his laughter every now and again. But, um... Uh, the, the prices on, on those are like $15 a piece and then you have to buy five sometimes or here and there. Mm -hmm. And this, this kind of leads me to another question that I'll get to. But I mean, like, is, is, do you think that it's fair to ask $15 for like a, 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 a something like that? I know that there's one really, really good one out there. I mean, I know Now and Later does them quite often and I love Now and Later stuff. Like, don't get me wrong. But mm -hmm. I mean, like $15 for... You know, one picture that's like the size of, you know, what is it? What was what was the what were the dimensions? Five twelve by five twelve. Um, and I mean flat coloring versus a person who's charging the exact same amount for you know shading and all of this other stuff. You know, it's it's I guess it's it's probably again that popularity thing. Like if a person's popular for doing right. stickers, charge fifteen, and like. It's it's not saying doing little to no effort. It's it's more like saying you know, um, they can charge an amount, and they like you're going okay, cool. That's now and later is like level, and everybody else going like I can do more for the same price because they're trying to challenge 
that person is an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I, I think, and a lot of the prices are always like, you know, fair enough. But, you know, we're from South Africa. The rand is shit. Our rand to the... Yeah, our, our rand is terrifying right now, and they're trying to, like, what's the word, arrest our finance minister. <laughs> Who's the only person um, keeping the ship afloat at this point? Yeah, and our rand has gone worse to worse to, I think it dropped like 4%. But the thing is, is that, like, I mean, when international people, and I mean, I know that the first world are the people who will be buying a lot of your art. But, I mean, people from Brazil, people from, you know, Turkey, people from... Well, Turkey's part of the EU, isn't it? I'm not sure about that fact. Okay, forget Turkey right now. But South Africa, possibly Mexico, our our rand to dollar like ratios are really, really sucky. So when we see, you know, fifty dollars for something, we see five hundred rand and that's literally see, like No, we see seven hundred and fifty. And that's that's half a month's groceries. Oh wow. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people from South Africa save up, like, a whole bunch of money to, you know, buy the commissions, which is great, because I think um, somebody mentioned this earlier, and Shai agreed with it, um, where, you know, there, yeah, and no, it was Iggy again. If you want something epic, you'll pay for it. Right. Mm-hmm. Because and it's a luxury I, I, item. It's not yeah. a necessary need. Mm. But, and I say five rand, uh, 500 rand, I mean, like, it's, what would that be, 700? It's seven hundred fifty. Yeah, fifty dollars. Not about seven, seven, seven hundred fifty. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean, fifty dollars like, is um, these days. And like, say if we look at fursuits as well, like I mean, oh five thousand dollars is doable in America, I guess. Right. I, I doable. Yeah. It's, but you can I mean, save like up for it. Most people earn. Yeah, if you're up for it, yeah. But like five thousand dollars here is like two months' salary for some people. Three months' salary. Oh wow. And it becomes, it, it's it's a very very difficult it's a different struggle, I think, for people from third world countries who want to be part of like the larger, I guess, first world, you know, furry fandom. And a lot of us are sitting here going like, I really want this, but I don't have money for both rent and this at the rent right now. Right. And it's 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 pretty interesting to look at that. I mean, like, and this is probably one of the reasons why, if we look at our artists in South Africa right now, why they're thriving the way that they do, is that you'll find that you know, there's a price for internationals, because we know that internationals can pay that amount because those are the general amounts that are going on out there, and then mm-hmm. there's a price for people from South Africa, because this is our country, this is our local, and we love. Like, I personally love buying local because that's the most important part to me because our furry fandom needs to be able to take care of itself using its own, like, you know, motion forward. Right. Its own resources. And I don't know, like, it's it's interesting, like, that that this kind of stuff happens. And, I mean, maybe if if you want to, like, ever look at some of our South African artists, there's Nanook and then there's Electrocat. Um who are our two, I guess, prestige artists, we can call them? Do you think our, ex- our exports. Artists? Our exports. Our exports, yeah. <laughs> and we do have, like, exports other than them, but, I mean, like, they're our most famous, or yeah. our, our most well-known, I guess. Yeah, so, I guess, oh, okay. fame has to do with it, yeah. But, and I mean, like, and, and that's that's the kind of the, the, the kind of interesting thing that I like about, like, the furry fandom at large, is, is that... We're willing to charge higher prices for people outside, but even then, it's still relatively cheap uh, in comparison at times. Mm. And one of the things that I obviously don't necessarily want is people start undercutting the market. Right. What is the market anyway? There's there's nobody who's doing like, you know, <clears throat> and today in uh, financial uh, sales today. <laughs> right. Uh, the Dow Jones marked a furry uh, drop in the amount of mm. uh, art sold this month. That means that the uh, furry coin is going down. What the fuck? Like, seriously, it's nothing like that. Well, but, it's funny I mean, that you say that because, like, the furry um, market is already lower than what the illustration market is already. Like, we are already getting undercut, which is crazy to think because, like, what you said with your country, it's like you already – you know, are lower than that, so it's like double the amount lower than what you should be getting. Yeah. And the market's I mean, smaller. So. Yeah. 
No, Scratch, there was a point in, in 2015 that, like, for, a, for an international to buy a, a full, what do you call those things, ref sheet yeah. from EC, it would have been, what, $30, $50? It's 50 now, last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last yeah, last year was forty dollars for an entire ref sheet with like three characters, a front and a back shot, and then three characters and three different ar and a headshot. And I mean, like, and like that's that's insane if you look at the way that like some people are going. Like for an entire good, you know, ref sheet, you're looking at maybe seven hundred and fifty dollars at times. Right. Yeah, I mean, like. I guess it's what people value. I mean, what they think that they're worth. Because like I have seen people charge reference sheets for like twenty bucks, and like I have seen people like me, which people don't buy reference sheets for me for whatever reason, which I'm totally fine with because I don't personally like doing them. But like, yeah. I mine are like I don't know, like two fifty, three hundred, or something like that, which I think is a lot of money for like a ref sheet. Like, but. Then I, this is where I get conflicted, is because well, ref sheets take a lot of hours to get correct, yeah. and like a lot of the time people don't have when they're getting a ref sheet, they don't or, like already have art of the character half the time. So it's like you're making yeah, this character yeah. up, which takes more hours. So it's just like it's one of those conflicting things when it comes to ref sheets. Mm -hmm. And then of course and there's money. that point where you're streaming and the person is in the stream because EC does that. Where she right. has the, 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 the commissioner in the stream, and then she asks specific questions. Like, should I do this or should I do that? Should I do this or should I do that? And you're mm. going, I don't like this, but keep that. No. And, and that back and forth. And I, I've, I've been in a stream like this because I had a ref sheet from EC, which is why I know the prices. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's absolutely insane the amount of time and the amount of frustration that you can cause just by doing that. Like, you sit there going like, no, 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 it's all wrong. And then the other person's like, but what's wrong with it? And you're kind of going... They're like, oh, I don't know. Maybe the arm. It's like, you, so it's wrong, but you don't know what's wrong with it. Mm. It's like... Yeah. It's and then, like, the thing that makes me angry is that, like, when, like, somebody will be like, oh, that looks fine. And then, like, you start coloring and stuff. And then they're like, no, that looks off. And it's just like, you just told me that looked fine. Like... Mm. Yeah. And and also there but could be a lot more at stake because maybe they use that ref sheet for, like, a fursuit or something. So you have to make sure it's right and... Yeah. Right. I mean, it's a reference sheet for mm. yeah. It's called the reference sheet for a reason. Exactly. Like it's like, yeah. it's their reference sheet that they're gonna use all the time. You know. Mm. Um. Back to my original thought pattern. At this point, um, oh I was gonna ask, like, aside from commissioning uh, art to people and things like that, what is the do you have any other side projects that you're currently working on? Maybe, uh, um, you know, like comics or anything that you work on or like a longer form works for people? I wish. I mean, like, commissioning really takes up all my time. Like, it's – I don't think people realize how big of a workload it is. Like, sometimes I will wake, wake up from 9 o'clock in the morning and then go to bed at, like, 11 o'clock at night and work that entire day. Like hmm. – just to get one picture done for this yeah. person. And uh, so, like, some, I don't really have a lot of free time. I mean, I am working on a game, though. I'm doing artwork for oh, a wow. game, um, which... Can, can you tell us some details about that? I can. I can't tell too much, but uh, it's called Ego, I think it's called. I'm not, I don't not, I'm still not sure how to pronounce the name of it. Like, I only do the work for it. <laughs> but uh, E-I-G-O? Uh, it's A E G O. A E G O. Okay. Yeah. So oh, it's okay. like Ego or something. I sent the link, but like. Oh, cool. We'll we'll pop that into the chat. Is Ooh, that a Patreon site? No. Sorry. Um, local project. Is it something you and someone else started, or did someone reach out to you to do the art, like professionally? Well, somebody, a uh, bit who is the owner of it, he was actually on Twitter and was like, hey, I have this huge project that I'm thinking about doing. He's like, I need an artist that's, like, willing to commit. And me being my own boss, I'm always willing to commit to something. <laughs> so I was just like, hey, I'll just uh, – because I, I had no clue what he wanted. So, like, I thought it was going to be, like, a month project. And I was like, okay, I'll just see what he wants. So I was like, yeah, I have some free time or whatever. 
So he tells me that he wants to make this game, and I'm like, okay, so you want me to do, like, the title screen art? He goes, no, mm. I want you to do all of it. And I'm like, Come again oh, for okay. Big Fudge? <laughs> You're right. So I was like, <laughs> well, I'm like, I'm fine with that, but we're going to have to, like, talk, of course. And so I was doing the backgrounds for a little bit and the characters and all the other stuff. And I was just like, I can't do these backgrounds because I suck at these backgrounds that you're wanting. Because, like, I'm, my style is just not meant for that. And he was like, okay, well, you can do the characters. So, like, I started doing the characters. And then we had this girl that came in named De- Deanna or Dina or something. Um, she's not a furry, but she's a really well artist. And she does the backgrounds for the game. So we got her. And then we have Steph who is the concept artist that lives near Bit in Florida, I think is where they live. Um, so they, like, talk and stuff. But, like, we have, like, five people working on this thing mm-hmm. now. But before, it was just me and him trying to do it by ourselves. Right. And I just thought it was going to be, like, this month thing, but it's been going on for, like, almost a year now. Mm. Okay. And You're, well, feel free to plug it, by the way. I see that you guys, your, your Patreon... Um, hasn't hit its first, is that its first goal, 500? I think so. Yeah, because okay. that, I mean, he's just trying to get it so he can pay me and, like, everyone else, because, like, he pays out of his pocket right now. Okay. Yeah, that, All that, right. That, I that's think always that's, a strange proposition. Yeah, this, this is a fairly, gr- this is actually pretty awesome. I, I like what I'm seeing so far. Yeah, uh, which we just released a new character, which is a tiger that I drew. Um, which I can link you that as well. So this is like the only spare time that I have. So like when I'm working and then he's like, I need you to do this character. I literally drop everything and like just do this thing, but it's like taking it out of my work time. So like, I literally have no time to like do anything. That's like side project I guess, I guess this would be the side project, but I'm getting paid to do it. So it's still work. Hey, yeah. It's income. Right. Yeah. Oh, that is an amazing tiger character. Thank you. Oh, there's sorry. there's parts. That's okay because in the game you can uh, strip him naked and do some things with him. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was so like, where do I guys, pledge? Other characters. You can actually there's a free download that you can download it too. I don't think there's anything special in it yet, but soon hopefully. I'm excited to draw those. I'm really excited to make the artwork for that part. Is is this a lot like that Japanese? Um, Danganronpa. Like, yeah. Yeah, kind of. It's not. I mean, it's not going to be as well made because Danganronpa is so like awesome and it has like a company and stuff. But like, it is a detective. Like, oh, you got to figure out what's happening with, you know, your father and these kids and blah blah blah. And of course, there's like sexual interactions that you can like relate to and stuff. So it's like it's more on the R-rated side, but mm-hmm. it's like detective kind of stuff okay that's actually pretty awesome i'm 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 liking this already if i had three dollars <laughs> like free i would totally pay to this oh well you don't have to because we've released like demos after like a month and stuff so yeah it's it's not about the demos it's really wanting to like i i love the idea of being able to um what's the word give to yeah give kick Kickstart things. And I know that Scratch also likes kickstarting things every now and again. Mm-hmm. Scratch, what was the most, like, uh, sorry, just, just a weird aside. What is the weirdest thing that you've kickstarted? And the question's going to go back to you, Ty. Um, oh, God. The weirdest thing that I've kickstarted. Um, I've, I haven't kickstarted a lot of things, to be honest. I, like, I love the concept of it. But the weirdest thing, or, like, the biggest moonshot, I think, that I've kickstarted was probably... Um, uh, American McGee's follow-up to Alice, like the third follow-up that was supposed to be like a, an episodic series of Alice, um, yeah, which never got off the ground because it couldn't acquire the licenses, so I got my money back on that one. Um, and the other thing that I that I well, it's not kickstarted, but it was a fundraising thing, was um, for the extra credits team. Their main artist needed like a, a shoulder surgery. And um, some of the things that they that they um, that they gave away was like a T-shirt, so I pledged to that, and I was like, "Yeah, T-shirt for a thing I love." Hmm. Cause I well, le- that's nice. I love me some extra credits. And some yeah. and some of the overflow money yeah. was actually used to help like um, 
help uh, like fund a small studio because there was a lot of extra money left. So they actually put oh, that to, put that towards um, funding a small studio that they trust. S scratch. Yes. Oh, cut out. Oh, okay. Well, it should be fine on my side um, since I'm back costing. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, um, just go back to uh, funding a small. Yeah, uh, no, Sorry, it's actually just. just yeah, there was there was so much money left from that f uh, fundraiser that they put the money aside to uh, like fund a small studio that they like sort of handpicked and uh, like trust to make their game and yeah so that's really cool it's good to see that they're that's putting really the cool. money to putting the money to good use that's yeah. good mm. and uh, Utah oh, that's some dumb the weirdest thing yeah please tell me uh, you do not the potato salad guy no oh, I, I, I know I know who that is but I didn't uh it was Video? probably like a. It wasn't on like Kickstarter. It was like some. It was like a weird petition thing that I like gave money to. It was only like five dollars, um, mm -hmm. but it was. <laughs> it's such a weird thing, but it was. So it was birth control for men, Ooh. like. I was just like, I don't know, because um, this is such a weird. <laughs> this is such a weird subject, but as a girl, you kind of have to take birth control just because. When you're young, blah, 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 mm -hmm. parent talk. Um, so I was just like, you know what? What if the guys, like, had birth control? So then there was, like, this petition where they were like, oh, yeah, we're going to, like, go into the science study of, like, giving male birth control and blah, blah, blah. And there was, like, this petition. They were like, yeah, just, like, donate $5 and we'll get this, like, on top priority. And I was like, you know what? That'd be pretty cool. Like, I was like, not even just the fact that it was, like, birth control or whatever but i was just like that's a really cool thing to like study because it's you know with males like it's a completely different opposite so i donated to that when i was like i don't know like 18 or something hmm. that that's was probably like the weirdest thing i ever donated to that's interesting though it is for science yeah and they actually have made a prototype and it's like actually working like they're doing it sweet does it if, uh... Obviously, the question would be, like, does it affect anything? But I don't think that's that's for this conversation. <laughs> um, but, um, <clears throat> wow, that's actually pretty awesome. Uh, I, I think thought that it was that interesting. Should, I, I think it's interesting. I would donate $5 to it. Um, but then again, I'm, 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 a, I'm a filthy liberal. <laughs> <laughs> dirty liberal hippie. Such a dirty liberal hippie. Arr. Um, <laughs> making sounds like that. Quit it. Uh, I, what? Quit it. No, I like it. Um, so I had an argument with 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 Doge, and it's it's because he's like the only foil that I have at this point to argue with. But <clears throat> now we were looking at at people who do you know animation and things like that, say uh, Vivzy Pop and all of those people on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um. And we were watching her uh, do like fan art of Sausage Party, but the, the the amount of time that she spent to like make that it 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 seemed like it took her what was it fifteen twenty minutes right about right. while talking um, to be able to do this like fully shaded like picture of that and I was always wondering like um, if they ever got into the art scene and just did art um, would that affect anybody within the art in, in the in the artist uh, sort of like alley, or is it actually that it takes a lot longer than that? Oh, like to... yeah, with their animation style, like with the quick coloring kind of stuff. Mm. Um, I think it depends because like everyone's kind of listed in different categories. Like you got the people who paint, and you got the people who do like really quick sketches, and then you got the people who do like animation, like with the quick drawings, you know, like fully color and shade it but it's like simple you know it's not like fully detailed it's just like a simple drawing mm. and i think everyone's kind of like placed in those categories where it's like well depending on how many hours you're gonna spend on this thing is kind of gonna value what your worth is pretty much so like with animation people charge not for necessarily the style but for how long it takes to animate this thing because you gotta make sure everything's like you know correct and something doesn't look funny or like you know, because it takes, like, I've seen, it takes, like, months and months to do, like, even an animation that's only, like, five minutes long. 
because it mm. takes so much time into programming yeah. it and like making sure it works correctly as to where like an art piece that i do that's like fully painted would only take like a few days yeah yeah even though the animation looks simpler than a painted piece by me <sighs> That's that's always going to be an argument between like you know CG versus you know traditionally drawn art. And I've like even when CG came out, like with movies like Shrek for Shrek One and so on and so forth, I was always sitting there going like, I really 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 hope that people go back to like traditionally drawing art. But then again, it's it's not feasible anymore. It's not it's financially just feasible. It's easier. It's, but that's 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 my problem with it. I think I I have a big problem with that specifically because, you know, we, for the larger part of our, I guess, and I say we, but I mean like I'm talking about people who are 28, 29, 30, 35, 40, mm -hmm. and so on, grew up with you know traditional art and right. people copying, especially Disney, like copying um, whole entire animations, just changing the cells to look like the characters that they're supposed to. Uh, um, and and like I, redoing all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And we and we grew up with uh, like Hanna Barbera cartoons that yeah would, that would specifically split mm -hmm. like Yogi Bear and all those pe in Top Cat all of those people wore colors because they could use that as a splitting point for the animation so you can animate the body and the head separately. Yeah. And in that same sense, like if you looked at the old Tom and Jerry's, your oh, when there is. When when you look at the background and then you look at something that's going to move, you look at the apples or something like that, and there's like three or four apples that are completely and utterly different. It's colored. like a different color, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's something that I'd really like to see uh, again. I think that if uh, if Disney's ever listening, um, go back to traditional art just for like one movie, please. Like I I really like it, like the traditional stuff, like um. Like Totoro or in like Kiki's Delivery yes. Service, and like yes. those are all drawn out, and like they look yeah. phenomenal. Like there's no program on the computer that's gonna be able to do that. Like it's just crazy the amount of time that they put into that, and like I wish that they could still do that, but like all that people care about now is money. Like they're just yeah. like whatever can do the quickest. Like if we can get this movie out in like a month, then pff, let's do it this way. So like now when you watch animes and stuff, it's like half the thing is, like, 3D rendered, and, like, the only art is, like, the characters. And, like, yeah. even with that, you have, like, 20 people working on that one character, and, like, half of it's just copy-paste kind of stuff. And it's just, like, they're doing it because yeah. it's quicker. Quicker means more money, and yeah. that's what people well, they care. They use Flash. Yeah. Right. Or yeah. Toon, or Toon Not that Toon Flash Toon. is actually that bad. Yeah. yeah. Our company but uses Toon it's, it's Yeah. Um, one of the things that I actually wanted to sort of, like speak about, it, it kind of like literally brings me straight back full circle to a question that I'm looking at. I don't know if I want a definitive answer for it or not, but I mean, if we look at that entire idea of like, you know, how much is too much to ask, do you think? Like, I'm, there, there are so many artists out there, and one would think that if, if we had to follow the original 1950s market um, you know, what do you call it, market strategy, which was if there is more there, then the prices should go down. If there's less there, then the prices should go up. But because everybody is such a very speci specific artist, it's, it doesn't really matter. And I think, I guess one of my, one of, and I'm, I'm probably debating against myself here, but because um, in defense of that entire idea is, is the fact that, you know, um, if we were, if we had this kind of technology in the 1500s with Van Gogh and Monet and those people, like I say 1500s for those people, I'm completely and utterly out of my time zone. Please don't don't kill me. But um, where you know Van Gogh was what a starving artist. He he died without having any of his paintings actively yeah. like properly he sold. He only became famous posthumously. Right. It, I, is is. I think it's firstly I think it's it's very very good that people can actually make a living off of it. I think that that's very very important. But I mean again like how much is too much? Mm. Um in the sense of like money wise or in the sense of yeah. like drawing like uh, you obviously uh, have only a specific amount of time and right. that time is valuable to you. Um I mean like I treat it as a job so like 9 to 5 
job, you know, because it used to be a hobby, but now it's my job. So now I have to treat it like a job. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you'll go over that and it's like, you have those thoughts of like, you know, is this really worth my time to like sit here for hours and hours and hours to make this drawing that's, you know, someone's going to look at for three seconds. I mean, like, of course they're paying for it and obviously that's worth it, but sometimes it's like, this maybe this is too much and stuff. It is kind of, I think it depends on the person when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, but like when it comes to like quality over quantity, the reason why furries get paid the way that they do is because we're doing quantity and we're yeah. less so quantity or yeah, quantity, less so quality because like people like Van Gogh and stuff would like spend years and years on like one painting so like when that sold it was like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars because there's only one of that yeah. as to where like furries are like oh well, i can draw like 20 of these and sell them you know yeah mm. does that do you, do you ever think that that limits you as an artist oh definitely i like if i wanted to sell like a big painting like and i do all these like little stuff and I wanted to be like, oh, I worked on this for like a year and then tried to sell it. Somebody would have been like, I'm not paying for that when I can get something like little from you. Like, why should I pay for this huge painting mm. that you spend your like whole year on that's like $2,000 than I can for this like thing that's like 20 bucks, mm. you know? Yeah. And it's made by you, so it's like, what's the point? Because um, that uh, – sorry, Scratch? No, I was going to go off on a different tangent, so – continue with your train okay. of thought because i do want to speak about something that shia actually said right at the beginning like 10 past eight um he said mm -hmm. he said the following he's like speaking of popular artists there's a whole idea of commissioning an artist for exposure um he's seen people commission people only really to get their character known which is apparently for him a very furry thing to do oh yeah definitely mm. I've, I've, it's it that is so insanely weird for me. It's so weird like, too because like there's a lot of people that there's like popular quote unquote popular people that are like just buying art, but they're popular because of the art. So like they're buying yeah, all these, yeah. you know, not safe for work stuff, and they're like, oh ha ha, I'm like so popular because of my character and stuff. And it's really funny because excuse me, I just like almost vomited. Uh, it's <laughs> wow. like. Uh, it's it's weird too because like I I notice that once my popularity I guess continues to grow I see quote unquote more popular like characters and stuff coming to buy stuff from me so then I know I'm like I know why they're here like I know why they're buying this from me so that they can make themselves more popular because like I'm Which, starting to get yeah so their characters can show up in your gallery essentially right because it, yeah. it's gonna be there and my name's on it and they're like oh well I have this drawing by this person so like i'm the best and it's just like you know it's it's weird like it's something that you notice when you're working in the industry yeah i mean if if i mean consider consider the amount of poets out there or writers or anything like that i mean obviously everybody has their prestige writer i mean kyle gold is out there who we've actually had on the podcast a but I times. mean, like I myself, I mean, I write poetry, for instance. I've been on DeviantArt for 12 years now. I have mm -hmm. 288 deviations out there. But in comparison to my sister, who was on exactly the same time, who was an artist, um, her page views like like quintuple mine almost. Right. And it's because she does art. And I would say that some of the things that I do as a poet. Um, require just as much thought just as much sort of like and the thing is is that like and and that's that's sort of my 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 perspective on this is that obviously art sells better than poetry does i mean you don't just necessarily it's not the 1500s anymore you can't just commission shakespeare for a poem about right. your lost love in this specific sonnet and it's going to take him three hours to do it because he definitely doesn't know who you are yeah <laughs> Mm. And it's, and it's I don't, yeah, go. It's upsetting. Like, I, I feel as though that, like, like if I were to, I'm, I'm actually going to try to start doing a comic, but, like, I'm worried because, like, people, writers like you, I need, like, I don't know how to write, you know, like, I don't know, the only thing I know how to do is draw, and I think the reason why people are so fascinated with drawing is that it's quicker to look at, mm. you know, like, yeah. they just yeah. look at it for three seconds, or, like, 
oh neat and then that's it very like, easily i learned something in one of my right like i learned something in one of my arc exactly like i learned something in one of my art classes where they were like the max time that someone's going to look at something that you do is three to five seconds and like that's upsetting to think about but at the same time it's it's correct i mean like no one is going to sit there for like 10 minutes and look at this drawing you know yeah and i guess it's it's probably because we have so many people that we're actually you know um following i guess i mean like if i look at my follow list at this point it's long ugh, i watch 289 people for instance and I go into my, I, I literally go into my, uh, my subscribe or my, yeah, my, my submissions and I scroll through submissions. I look for things that I like, I click on them and everything else that I don't like, I literally just go, you know, right. check all, remove checked. That's it. And that's the difference that's between reading is because when you read, you're like, you don't know if it's going to look good. Like you don't know what it's about. And it's like half the time people don't want to take the time to see what it's about. Yeah. Like, they're like, oh, I don't have time to, like, sit here for two hours, you mm -hmm. know? So when, with art, people can just look at it, like, instantly, and then they're like, I know how I feel about that. I'm gratified. Uh. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, we were a little bit over time, but the, what I do want to ask you is, is that there are two things, three things that I want to ask you. Um, most, like, I guess, what was your, what was your defining moment as an artist, and what was your... Like I, I guess, like defining moment positively and defining moment negatively, where to the point where you almost wanted to give up. Um, so if you could give us like just sort of a succinct, you know, maybe three to four minute explanation of both. Okay. And then yeah, and then directly after that, just sort of like a summation. What do you want us to know about you? And um, you know, what's your maybe maybe what's your favorite thing about the furry artist community? Okay. Um. Well, my defining moment as not wanting to do this job is almost every day. Um, yep. And jokingly, and uh, <laughs> and I guess like the highest moment. I don't really know. I guess when I started making money was like when I was kind of like, which was I probably like five years ago. And even then, like, I wasn't making a lot, but, like, once I started charging people and people were, like, coming back to buy stuff, I was, like, oh, wow, I can, like, make this my job. Like, I can live off of what I like to do. And when you're an artist, you kind of have, like, those moments of, like, peaks. Like, you'll be, like, working, and you're, like, oh, wow, this is great, and then, like, you'll get to, like, this low moment, and then I'll, like, come back, and then it's kind of, like, oh, I'm in this new form of, like, different style, and, like, yeah. people are coming back again, and then... So you kind of have like these peaks and lows at the same time mm. when you're doing art. Mm. Yeah, I, I saw this graph of basically like um, uh, and, and there are these two sort of s waves that basically go up in dif at different rates, um, where you sort of un uh, sort of appreciate your ability and mm -hmm. like if you have your appreciation of your ability and your actual ability they sort of crisscross each other in in places where you get like there's at least peaks where you get imposter syndrome and then there's these peaks where you get like um like overly confident in your stuff and they so, sort of help to correct each other the whole time right because like there's points where i'm like oh i feel like i'm doing really good right now and like i really like my style but then there's like points most of the times there's more lows than highs when it comes to liking your style but like mm. when i'm low about it i'm like man they're like this just isn't me or like oh this doesn't look how i want it to look and like you'll just go through those points and like it's it's hard to keep at a steady pace when you're feeling that way all the time like it's like when you're feeling dread but then you're like happy the next day you're like oh wow this is great and then like then like the next day it's just like oh this doesn't look the way i want and it's just and then you get artist blocks which is like sin almost mm. And then you can't draw anything. Mm. All right. And the high point? And your favorite? Oh, sorry. High point was money. Well, I thought you were. Yeah, high sorry. Point. My apologies. Money. <laughs> 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 really? Okay, but I mean, your your favorite part of the 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 artists um, like community? Um, I would say that everyone's pretty open to helping each other. Like, if you ask them, like, oh, hey, like, uh. 
I really like the way that you do this. Like, how'd you end up doing that? Like, they're pretty open about telling you or like what program they use or like what, you know, how they work. And like, I'm sure if I went and asked like a really popular artist, like I would get no like information, like they would never reply to me. But with the community, I think it's pretty easy to get in contact with other artists and learn. I mean, that's how I learned. I learned from other people and like visual stuff from like the site and like just from everybody just learning with each other which i think is really great all right that's that's really good so um if do you have any shout outs that you'd like to do um other than shia being a lazy butt in the other room Mm -hmm. uh not really i mean i'm i'm here if anyone wants to talk uh feel free to message me whenever um i'm not scary don't feel like i'm gonna bite your hand off or whatever i'm just a person don't feel threatened just because of my artwork. Oh, there he is. Hi, Shia. Are you staring at me? He's staring at me. He's leaving. Okay, bye. <laughs> he just All gave right. me this weird look like, why'd you mention me? I mentioned him twice, I think. <laughs> <laughs> now he's yeah. peering at me through the bathroom. <laughs> weird. He's so weird. Ladies and gentlemen, Shia Koft. <laughs> yeah, don't get to know him. He's a weird guy. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, he's nice. Don't worry, I think we've tried. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> successful. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. Uh, okay, he's he's gone and done the leer off to the... This is my left-hand <laughs> side. Um, I did post a link to the South Africa First site if you guys want to check it out on YouTube later. Um, so yeah, just check us out on YouTube. Subscribe, uh, kill... Destroy. Main, yeah, so, maim, maim, kill, destroy. Yeah. Like. Maim, <laughs> maim, 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 yeah, that, that thing. Maim, kill, destroy. Destroy us on Facebook. Destroy us on Tumblr. Destroy us on Twitter. Destroy us on... With the like buttons, please. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that there's a dislike button. And yes, there is in Twitter. Fuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> stop it, would you? <laughs> Sorry, I... Um, so my flatmate Doge, just as a quick aside, um, has some of the more interesting laughs, especially when he's actively laughing about something. And if you guys haven't seen that YouTube video of that white, f- or the, the Arctic fox, like laughing. Um, oh, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to link it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it is Doge. Yeah, it's, it's Doge's laugh. It literally is. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to link that in the chat. So maybe just wait for me when I do that. Uh, what I'm going to do quickly is, is I just want to thank all the people who are listening to us. That'd be Shia. Hello, Shia again. We're <laughs> things. Uh, Kinkin, um, Dark, Arashi, uh, Victor, Cape Fox, Kitune, Kitune, Kitune. It doesn't have an S in it. So I'm assuming that it's going to be Kitune or Kitune, uh, Kitune. I don't know. It, Anything. Continue. And there's Wind King for continue. Fuck, dude. Seriously, Wind King, Fernix, Badge, Iggy Twiggy, Fluffy Wuffy 2.0, who came in a little bit late. Uh, Bravura from Furry FM side. Rico was also on here. Did I mention Honan was on here as well? I didn't say his name. I can't remember. I nope. cannot remember vocalizing it. Um, and I think that's about it from that side. But I'm pretty sure that there's a whole bunch of other people listening from anywhere else. Oh. Um, Scary. Shia, yeah, like it is rather um, apparently, and I say this apparently because I'm never sure, and I just get like logistics way later. Uh, we get about 150 to 180 late, uh, listeners, and then um, off of YouTube, we get a whole bunch of hits off of there. I say a whole bunch. Oh, great. Um, I'm, I'm lying, <laughs> like through my teeth. <laughs> Maybe 32. <laughs> we'll, we'll put it there, like in a year. But like, again, um, <clears throat> I'm underestimating, I'm sure. But have a look at us on YouTube. Um, Check us out on Twitter. Follow us there so that you can see who else is going to be on next. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's either a group of people that I've recently started talking about with Tempo uh, who do a game or mainstream furry games on YouTube that we'll possibly have on here. There's another group from YouTube that is also doing a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, what was it? 
a, a raccoon colony? Raccoon something? Oh, the, the name of Isabel. Something about raccoon. I didn't mention this before. I do know that I've, I've spoken about it. Or it could be Tarkin from uh, Turkey, who's in England, I think, but he's a Turkish fur who's attempting to get, to get the uh, Turkish uh, furries up and running on that side. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, uh, so there's a large amount of other things. And of it, because Bravura is Bravura, he's immediately sent me a message saying, These are the people <sighs> listening right now. Mm -mm. <laughs> So um, I'll give you the proper. Wow. Okay, cool. 145 connections from Germany, 17 from Switzerland, 9 from Netherlands, 8 from the United States, 5 from South Africa. All on FurryDelta.fm right now. Thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate that. Thank you very much, uh, Spazzy, for joining us. Um, of course. It's been a pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's, it it's really indeed. been a pleasure. We really enjoy having a chat with you. We well, like, I'm glad. Wow. Like, well, mind blown um <laughs> but yeah uh so um we're definitely hoping that you might be able to come on at some point again because like you know new projects obviously that that video game of yours which you're more than willing to plug or more than welcome to plug on here again so oh yeah check that out it's it i mean i checked it out when it first started um because like i don't really see the process of the game but i i played it for a little bit and i personally like the story so far, I have nothing okay. to do with the story, but I like it. I think it's really good so far. So, that, so that's Ego. Yeah, A E G O. All right. Hmm. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Okay, thank you so much, uh, and thank you, Scratch, for being the whatever you call yourself on this thing, the code rack. Apparently, <laughs> I'll I'll take it. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, just remember to get your hat on the way out. I am hat. You don't wear a hat. I am hat. You wear a hoodie. I'm dying. Okay, sorry. Um, also, for everybody who's listening on Furry.fm and First Stream, uh, just if you could hold up for a couple of minutes, hopefully within the next 15 minutes, I'll be up and running on Furry.fm, playing a little bit of music of uh, my choosing. And yeah, so I'll see you guys on that side. I'll probably be running for at least the next two hours, um, at least the next one and a half hours, depending on how tired I become. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to have a look at furry.fm, uh, come over to that side. We're going to be playing a little bit of metal, a little bit of folk, a little bit of electro-esque things in this in the like line of what do you call the band again? No, I don't have any Matthew Mole. Um, some Afrikaans folk music as well. Uh. Some Afrikaans rock. Shut up! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But yeah, we'll see you guys that side. If you guys want to have a listen to some music while you're busy doing whatever the hell you guys are doing. Um, so yeah, we'll see you there. Cool, cool. Uh, and thank you again, Spazzy, for, for joining us. We'll, I think I'm wondering if it'd be a good idea to have you and Shy on the same podcast. Which oh my gosh. Be a mess. I, I'm imagining things exploding. Um, we just we bounce off each other a lot, so it'll be a lot of like making horrible jokes. At each other. Oh, that is perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure we'd both be down. I mean, like he's been on there, on here twice. So I mean, I've been on here now, and it was really fun. Thanks for having me, by the way. It was great. Thanks for being here. Big pleasure. All right, right guys. Signing out. Uh, we will see you next week. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. Don't die. Cheers, Thanks. everybody. Stay safe. On that. Goodbye. Okay,